Mike Stone here, and today I'm going to be showing you some of the hundred cards real in the Grant Tournament expansion, and share my thoughts about them. I know this video might be coming out quite late, but I haven't really had that much time to make them, so that's just bad luck, really. But well, first off, we're going to talk a bit about Asset more. Well, first thing I notice is he is a seven drop, and he has four two, which is ah, uh, that's not good. We're not starting off good. In effect, well, when I'm looking at it, it's it's like yeah, that 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 is cool. Well, but it can backfire pretty hard. So if you have gas real up, uh, and well, <laughs> he just says he made your power on it. You lose your gasarilla. So this is kind of sucky. And if you play this, and the enemy is like a pretty good druid, they just like use the living roots, a holy smite, and this is dead. So like this has to have. The turn you play it, you need to pretty much either even the game or win the game with it. So I, I don't like it. I, I think it's pretty bad. Like, I'm gonna get to its twin later, but I don't think they work very well together, actually. And I think this card is rather bad, actually. So, I'm gonna, I'm gonna say 3 out of 10. It's, with this one, Unleash the Hound, you kinda have, like, a really good board clear. But, I don't really believe it's gonna see play. I, I think it's too bad for it, really, and I wouldn't include it in my decks. So, yeah. Don't think it's good. Then, we've got Ball of Spiders. This card is pretty dang good, actually. Because, well, if you look at it, you get 3 one ones for 6. That is not amazing. But if you consider it that way, then, when these one ones die, you draw 3 cards. So, you get a 3-3 three, three and draw 3 cards for 6. I would play that in pretty much a lot of my decks. It, I think it's really, really good. So, yeah, obviously it's not spells or all that kind of stuff, it's beasts. And if you like Beast Hunter, you might just want this. But I'm kind of thinking of the dream. Like, the dream is the Thunder Rhino. Because then you can Thunder Rhino on the previous turn. If it's out there, Ball of Spiders, you get 3 1 1 Westmith with charge. And then gonna give you beasts for even more charging. And that's just gonna look crazy if you do it, I think. That's gonna be absolutely fucking cool. So, I like the card. I, li I really like this card. And I, I'm quite sure it's gonna see play. I think it's pretty good. I think people might play it as like the top of the deck. So, instead of playing Gas Real or King Crush in a Beast Hunter, you might just play this. And then have a lot of card drawn on this and play, play Lower Beast with Charging Beast. I don't know. Right I can see play. I'd say seven out of ten for this card because yeah, it's not amazing, but it it is, it is pretty damn good. And we've got Bear Trap. This card is I don't know. And oh, excuse me for the cursor in there. That's a bit of a cutting mistake I made. <laughs> not a cursor on the card, but well, Bear Trap is at best it's midcore. At best, because you might get a 3 3 that's gonna block an attack because they attack with the biggest minion first, and then they only have small shit that they don't want to give away into your 3 3. So that, that's like the best case scenario where you get a 3 3 for 2, and that annoys them a bit. But, well, it's not better than that, really. Like, if you just look at Explosive Trap, it's a consecration too. Well, that could really. Like scare off some people. So it's just good. Like freezing trap might just like absolutely wreck a big minion, and so it's not completely really playable the entire game because you don't want to use it. So it's basically like removing it. I don't know about this. I don't think it has the same impact as these two secrets. I think it's better than snake trap though because snake trap is pretty horrible unless you do have knife juggler. Or that other thing, oh, Starving Buzzard, I think it's called, called Master. Cut, drop, anyway, 
it just sucks, I think. This is like mid core at best. So, 4 out of 10. It's not that amazing. Then, Brave Archer. Skyrim is. Well, it, it's kind of mid core as well because. Like, I can see it in like this heavy face hunter just going purely one drop, two drop or something. And just really trying to circ the enemy down. And, and then this would have some kind of value by just standing and picking his face. But, like, it has 1 HP. It's gonna go down fairly quickly because it, it's gonna do a lot of damage to the enemy if it's safe. And obviously the enemy does not want that. But anyway, actually emptying hand is pretty hard early game. So you, you can't really run with this in your opening hand. You have to top deck it later. Which is weird, I guess. I think, I think it's good in a way, but I just, I've been trying now that the expansion is live, and I didn't really like it. I just felt like I just played a 2 1 for 1, but that didn't really do anything. I, like, I think I managed to pull off the effect once, something of some 2 3 games, and it, it just didn't feel really powerful. So, I'm not very fond of the card. I think it could be alright for really aggressive phase under, but I'm not fond of it. I'm gonna say like Level Gnome is a better choice in any deck. Whatever you wanna run, Level Gnome is gonna have priority over this. So yeah. Um four out of ten, cause it, it is okay, I guess. Like you can get lots of damage for it. it like two damage we can play it and it's fire. But it, anyway, it's yeah, I don't know. Now we've gonna go to Dread Scale, it's three mana in case you guys can't see that. Another cutting mistake. Kind of sorry I made these. Um, but dread scale. This is my actually. I hundred got two legendaries. You would expect at least one of them to be good, right? They just suck both of them, and this one is sucking even more than the other one. This is like pretty horrible. It's face hunter. You don't want your minion to die. You want your enemy to struggle with clearing your board, right? and you want to try to kill his face while he does that. This one helps your opponent. Like, it it does. You don't want that. It's not good. What you want for a minion is doing face damage and being hard to remove. But this one is neither. It actually just helps the enemy remove stuff and it's pretty easy to down kill. So, yeah. I don't like it. Stats, like, the stats for the cost are better than the twin, but the effects did not kind of work. In face hunt or anything, control hunter. Uh, if still the hand paladin comes as like the top tie deck, you might just see this. But if that is the top tie deck, I'm not gonna play face hunter. <laughs> still the hand paladin destroys face hunter and destroys pretty much all these decks. So. I would not play this. I don't, I don't think I'm. Gonna, I don't think I'm ever going to put this in one of my decks. I don't think I am. But maybe. I'm gonna say two out of ten though, because I don't think it's realistic. I don't think it's good. Then we've got King's E League. That's kind of better, I guess, because well, it you you get a, a to maybe draw a card when you play this, and. Obviously, it's a joust, so you'll see some of the enemy's deck, which is always good. But the bad thing is, they'll know if you win the joust, they'll know what your hand is. So, yeah. It is. I'd, I'd compare it to the. What's it called? Loot Hoarder. So it's plus 1 1, but you might not draw the card, and if you draw the card, your enemy will know what it is you have in your hand. So. Mm, I don't know. It, and you can only draw minions, so if you want that, it's probably better. But, I don't know, like, is this like for the more control hunter thing? I'm I'm having these crazy thoughts about running dragon hunter and then pulling your Sarah out of this so you don't have to mull over a dragon or something. But that's just crazy, don't do that. Guys, I don't think that's gonna work. So don't do that. But, well, yeah. I can see the cards you play, and it is okay stats, and you might just get a card draw, which is good, I guess, so. It's a good card. 
I'm gonna say five out of ten though, because your opponent will know what it is if you draw something, and you don't want your opponent to know your hand, obviously. Well then, we've got lock and load. This card is it's been having so much showcasing for Blizzard. Like this guy has, I don't know, Blizzard's been putting him in pretty much every deck they made for Hunter. Because everybody's like, oh, this guy's so cool. Let's make people play. But I don't know. I don't like it. I, I just don't like it. Every time you cast a spell, this is gonna cost two mana. Unless you do the double log and load, this is like you're gonna be playing two or three spells at best. I guess you're not gonna play your entire hand out of spells because then you're gonna be losing as hunter. You're not gonna be playing control deck spell deck and hunter. That's not gonna happen. Like hunter have a lot of these good burn spells, but I don't believe it. Like you're not gonna just Say this one Archangel and then just keep pulling Archangel for fueling it. That's not gonna happen. I don't believe in it. I just don't. The double lock and load is the dream, obviously. And this can't be better if it triggered off itself, so you would get at least one hundred card. But no. Just just no. I don't like it. I maybe maybe in a specific hunter deck build around it, you could do something with it, but I don't think so. Um, uh, at least for now, I'm very, very skeptical because you can pull two minions and you're pretty much over. You need to pull spells with it if you want to do stuff. So I don't like it. Oh, sorry, I forgot to say my rating. I'm going to say three out of ten. So then we've got power shot, and power shot is well, mm, yeah, I should. Uh, you might be pretty skeptical to it and say you can't hit the face, it's not damage it and yeah well it's if you think of it as a consecration then kind of because like in case you look at most boards there's gonna be three or less minions on it so you're gonna have it every minion on the board usually like this is not a guarantee but it's gonna be usually you're gonna hit every minion on the every board for two damage three mana which is decent, I'd say. Like it, it's a small card. It doesn't do face damage, sadly. Then it'd be really good if it did. But now it's just pretty average. It, it, I'd, I'd be okay with it actually. In a control hunter, I'd go for it. Like this card is good for removal. Because if the enemy plays, let's say muster for battle, you can just say, oh well, I remove that. And so I kind of like it. Actually, I'm, I'm pretty fond of it. So I this card I would pretty much just say yes in a control deck. I'm gonna say seven out of ten because I actually like it. I like a smaller consecration for hunter. Cause that just that is kind of what I think they might need in a control deck. But yeah, they've got explosive trap though. That is like so it's not that bad. Next card is Ram Wrangler. I'm always saying Ham Wrangler. I don't know why. But that's a good name, I guess, anyway. But, so he has this battle cry, which is unreliable at best. Because you have to have something, and you can get something random. So, yeah. But if you look at what you can get, you can get... Worst case scenario, Captain's Parrot. That is the absolute worst case scenario. Or, like, even worse is you don't get anything, because you don't have beast. But then you're not going to be playing him. And you, you, like, this is a beast hunter day. You're not playing him outside of Beast Hunter. You're not doing that. Right? Because you're not going to have enough Beast fuel. Because you want a hundred percent uptime on his battle cry. Right? So every time you play him, you get the battle cry. You don't want any, like, like timed, but it does not trigger. It has to trigger all the damn time. If not, then it's not damn worth it. But if it triggers, you might get the but if you just get a 3 2 Raptor, you're gonna get 6 5 5. Which is decent, like, and that is fine, really. And it's spread out over 2 minions, so you can't just say assassinate and destroy it. And uh, if you consider it, you can get Thunder Rhino, Thunder Rhino, or King Crush, or Svan Heimer, or Gazrilla, or that Jokomangar, the new. Cut the worm thing, 5 9 beast. 
So I actually think this card is pretty good. Because there's so many good beasts you can pull. And if you just pull a 2 drop, it's going to be worth it. So I like it. I really, really like it. And yes, beasts don't have really interesting effects. But they they don't really have any downsides like Doomsayer does. So it's kind of a win-win if you can make it pull off. Like, worst case, 4-4. Four, four. But that's not that bad, really. Then, then you got the worst case, okay, you might, like, it's not going to lose you the game. I, I don't think it's going to lose you the game to get a full 4 for 5. Uh, not if you're kind of unlucky, and, yeah. So, I like the card. I would pretty much go for this in a deck where I was running Beast Hunter. 7 out of 10, though, because, well, it can have these downsides. It's not always good, and I like consistency, so, anyway, 7 out of 10. Then we've got Stable Monster. This card is... Well... It's 4, 2, 3. That means it dies to pretty much anything. Like, Lebanon's gonna kill it. Which is annoying, kind of, so... Yeah. It dies to... Let's just say everything. Because it does. Then, but... It gives something else mood. So, I could see that late game, you've not been getting this on turn 3, so you can't make your... Bloodfin Raptor or something, trade into something else and win the trade. No cost. But, late game, you pull this. You have King Crush on the board. You do it on King Crush. You kill enemy Dr. Boom. You're gonna be like, yeah! And that that might happen, but you need these specific circumstances. Pretty much. You really need specific circumstances. If not, then it's not good. It's not a beast itself, sadly, which would have made it a lot better, because then you could really play this Beast Hunter deck It'd be really annoying with it, but it's not gonna happen though. I think the card's alright though. And I can see it in the control beast side of it, not the aggro beast in Sunder. But I'm not terribly fond of it. But yeah. It's playable. I even though other people might say otherwise, I'd say it's playable because it can have a good effect and well, it's 4 2 for 3, it's not horrible. It, it is not that horrible. If it had been 2 4, it'd be better, but it's alright. So, I'm gonna say that's playable. That is probably it. I just gotta say, I'd say 5 out of 10 for this card. But that is probably it for my Hunter card review. And I'm obviously gonna do more in the future. And, yeah. More reviews, I mean. So, that is it for now, and I will see you guys in my next video.